police are the biggest crybabies in America. Can you think of any other profession who is idolized in movies and TV, who are the subjects of nearly every book on society, who get standing ovations no matter how many unarmed people they kill? Being a cop is one of the safest professions in America, though to let the cops tell it, you'd think it was the single most dangerous. The white media, and the black media for that matter, hasn't told you this, but I will. I want you to spread this video. Repost it on your channel. Today. We need to get the facts out there. Blue lives matter to everyone, except the cops themselves. When it comes to cop killings, the police have been crying wolf for decades, and nobody has pointed this out. Until now. First, let me tell you how safe being an American cop is. Consider this. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, for every 100,000 cops in America, only 12 die on the job. 12 out of 100,000. That doesn't even put them in the top 10 of the most dangerous jobs in America. Compare that, on the other hand, to other professions, such as truck drivers. Over 23 truckers die per 100,000 drivers every year. Farm workers, more than 26 per 100,000 die every year. Garbage workers, yep, you heard me right. Over 36 trash and recyclable materials collectors die per 100,000 a year. That's triple the rate at which cops die. Think you'll see any white people holding any respect the trash rallies? So you see, according to the federal government's own statistics, trash men are three times more likely to die on the job than cops, farm workers more than twice as likely. Yet, who do we see being praised and protected by the media, politicians, and white public? You want to know why? Because farm workers and trash men are not the enforcement arm of white supremacy. The police are. So you see, there are plenty of other jobs far more dangerous than being a cop, but I think the point is made. Even when you look at the cops who die, it only makes it more clear the most dangerous threat to the police are the police themselves. Let's deal with the comparative handful of cops who die annually. We'll use the cops' own statistics to expose the fraud they and the media have pulled on the public. This is the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund website. They're pretty much the go-to source for stats regarding police fatalities. Ever since Ferguson and Baltimore, the police have claimed there's been a war on cops, right? Patrick Lynch, the chief thug of the NYPD, said it himself, as has Sheriff Oreo on Fox News. Police chiefs and sheriffs nationwide, as well as right-wing and even mainstream media figures, have been decrying the war on cops. The Black Lives Matters movement has opened the floodgates of anti-police violence, right? 2015 is the year of a cop killer, right? This year, officers are being gunned down left and right. In 2015, cops are being targeted in unprecedented numbers. Only they're not. According to the cops' own stats, the number of cops killed by firearms this year is down 21% from last year. In other words, the cops are safer since Ferguson and Baltimore. And it's not as if the white media doesn't know this. Even Bill O'Reilly admitted he knew the war on cops was a lie. Do you believe that the Black Lives Matter crew and other radicals are igniting violence against cops? There are fewer cops shot this year than last year. Are you willing to give Black, Li Black Lives Matter credit for that? Cop shootings are down. I know they're down slightly. 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 No, about 17%. Uh, it does. But in August, they were up. Ever it was since a bad this, month. Yeah, it was a bad month. The month there were none. Right. I mean, overall, they're down. Okay. So I don't see an epidemic there. So you see, the war on cops is about as real as the war on Christmas. The white supremacists in the media know this, but they tell the public exactly the opposite anyway. Now, let's parse the causes of death. Again, this according to the police's own statistics. The major causes of death listed are firearms and automobiles. 
You should have noticed that they differentiate car crash and struck by vehicle into two separate categories, as if it matters whether you were in a car or not if you die as the result of a vehicle collision. This is done as a form of breaking up the stats, for the sake of reducing one form of death so as to artificially make another form of death seem more numerous. In this case, downplay the number of cops killed in auto accidents so as to make the firearm death seem significantly more common, when in fact they're not. You see, they need for death by firearms to be the number one killer of cops, so they can push the narrative that policing is the most dangerous profession on the planet when it's not. If people realize that even the police admit the number one killer of cops is car accidents, the police can't demand their murderous behavior be overlooked because their job is so dangerous. The goal of these plea-for-pity cop memorial groups is to trick the public into believing the lie that cops are on some sort of front line, when the truth is the taxpayers are being forced to subsidize what has become a domestic death squad. But even if you are so foolish as to believe that firearms are the number one cause of death for police, you still can't escape the fact that the cops are selling the public a total lie. I've studied the perverted culture of the police for a couple of decades now, and when I saw this list, something jumped out at me immediately. It wasn't what I saw, rather what I didn't see. The National Law Enforcement Officers website lists many causes of death, some of them, like electrocution and struck by falling objects, are just stupid. But do you notice the one cause of death that's missing? Suicide. The dirty little secret in law enforcement is that more cops die by suicide than die in the line of duty. And that's according to the International Association of Chiefs of Police. The police chiefs themselves admit the greatest danger to cops is themselves. Recently, one suicidal cop, Joe Glinowitz, killed himself, but not before trying to frame Black Lives Matters for his own death. And the reason why? because he'd been robbing a children's charity. That's what you get for backing the badge. This shows just how perverted police culture is and always has been. The white supremacists were not saddened to learn Glinowitz killed himself, though they were saddened to realize that they wouldn't be getting any more propaganda value out of him. They were glad to mention him morning, noon, and night until they realized that the party was over. And as for the police, they were disheartened that he killed himself, but not one of them showed a shred of surprise. They deal with this on a near daily basis. The police know how common suicide is among them, but the media has refused to tell the public. Blue lives matter to everyone but the police and the media. And I'm not going to get into the two cops in Louisiana who were indicted after getting into a shootout with a white thug. They're learning the same lesson that that Asian cop in New York learned after he murdered Akai Gurley. The Police Benevolent Association is nowhere to be found. Fox News isn't telling the public how dangerous cops' jobs are now, or how they only have split seconds to react to a dangerous situation. The white supremacists aren't calling the dead child a thug in training, even though his father was a career criminal with a record long as my arm. All of a sudden, the media and the white public want justice when cops kill someone. Yep, blue lives matter, all right, but only if they're white. If Fox News and their white supremacist allies really wanted to support the police, they'd be calling for more mental health programs and psychological counseling for police. If the cops wanted to help themselves, they'd stop scaring one another with the culture of fear that deludes cops into thinking that every day will be his last. The police have lost their legitimacy, and when that occurs, no one will care what happens to them. There is no war on cops today, but if the slaughtering of unarmed civilians continues, there may well be one tomorrow, and no amount of media spin will gain the police any sympathy. When you've cried wolf as long and loudly as the cops have, your credibility dies long before your legitimacy does. The white supremacists cheering on the police have created a maze the cops can't get through. One lie after the other, 
forming a house of cards that will leave a public disgusted with the police in general. It's time the cops faced their lies and were called out on it. Because the truth is, blue lives only matter if a black person takes them. As I said before, repost this video on your own channel. Beyond that, lend your voice to this effort. The media's job is to cover the truth, and ours is to expose it. So get to it. Police are the biggest crybabies in America. Can you think of any other profession who is idolized in movies and TV, who are the subjects of nearly every book on society, who get standing ovations no matter how many unarmed out of a hundred thousand? That doesn't even put them in the top ten of the most dangerous jobs in America. Compare that, on the other hand, to other professions, such as truck drivers. Over 23 truckers die per 100,000 drivers every year. Farm work people they kill. Being a cop is one of the safest professions in America, though to let the cops tell it, you'd think it was the single most dangerous. The white media, and the black media for that matter, hasn't told you this, but I will. I want you to spread this out. Until now. First, let me tell you how safe being an American cop is. Consider this. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, for every 100,000 cops in America, only 12 die on the job. 12 this video. Repost it on your channel. Today. We need to get the facts out there. Blue lives matter to everyone, except the cops themselves. When it comes to cop killings, the police have been crying wolf for decades, and nobody has pointed